Hello everyone, welcome back to WB Blacksmithing. Today I'm going to try to make a Kydex press. I got some materials and I'm going to kind of bring you along with that. And I'm going to show you the knife that I promised to show you in the last video. So stay tuned. Thanks for watching. So there's the knife. Uh, I'll pick it up so you can see it a little better. But as I explained in the last video, it has an aluminum guard, aluminum pins, kind of a satin working finish on it so you can actually use it without the fear of scratching it up. It's pretty sharp. It has the white G10 liners. So, again, look at the white G10. I think it's a good looking knife. And I want to make a black Kydex sheath for it, so this is why I'm putting this together. And then, it is pretty sharp. Now I've got another bald spot. And that's just what I need. Yep. So, these are the basic supplies that I bought. I bought a heat gun for trying to heat Kydex, and I might end up using my oven or a toaster oven to heat the larger pieces then use this to heat up small sections, but we'll find out. I've never worked with Kydex before, so I have to find out pretty much everything about it. Now I got these eyelet slash rivets, and it came with a set tool to set the rivets. So that should be nice. And then I got two pieces of Kydex that are about eight by 12, and they are eight hundredths of an inch thick. <clears throat> Excuse me. So those should last a few sheaths, I would say. And then, I think the most important part is the thermofoam. I think that's what they call it. It's like an inch thick and 12 inches square or so. Now I need to try to make kind of a clamshell. I have this piece of plate steel back here. It's about perfect width so I can cut two sections off of that to make the top and bottom and then I'll probably make something for sides and I'll have to do something for hinges and I think that would be about the completed press back there maybe put feet on the bottom I'm not really sure but I'll find out real soon Alrighty, so the pieces are nice and clean. Uh, so I think what I'm going to do is maybe try to set the foam in between them and look at what I might need to make like sides. And I'm kind of thinking I might not need anything else at all as long as I find something to use for a hinge. And then just maybe weld a hinge back here and have like no sides because this is like quarter inch plate steel. It's pretty thick. And I'm not going to bend it by clamping the other end with some foam in between and a knife. So I, it should maybe be pretty simple. So I'll be right back whenever I figure something out. So what I'm going to do is use these two door hinges that I had. I'm going to set them like that and weld them. on there and then cut off the excess which i'm sure i did clamp this end here that way it's kind of got some compression going on there that way whenever i go ahead and clamp this side whenever my sheaths and stuff are in there i kind of have even pressure so i do want to mention that i hurried up and tack welded put four tack welds on each hinge that way i can get that foam out of there because i was worried that it would burn in there and it probably would especially like I know it would especially if I did full beads to weld those on which I'm going to do you can see what happened there and no problem you know there's nothing really even going to be in that side this is going to be the opening end here but you know just just a word of caution you know just those little tack welds you can see it started to melt a little tiny bit so do not leave 
these in here if you do it the way that I'm doing it. Just wanted to mention that. So I'm going to weld these all fully along and then cut off the excess like I said. So real quick, I thought maybe the lid would kind of need a handle. It would be kind of nice to have. So out of just some 3 8 inch round bar, I hurried up and bent a little handle in the pritchel hole. Just, you know, put it in there, bend it on both ends. And now I'm going to cut a couple kind of feet for the bottom out of this angle iron. I just cut a couple sections and then weld it so that the feet kind of stick out the side. I think that'd be nice. And I'll weld those on and weld the handle on and show you that. Alrighty, here it is. Welded the handle on and the feet. And it opens. It's going to be expected. So there will be foam in here pretty soon. I have to get spray adhesive. Alright, so it's like hours later, daylight time. I gave that a black coat of paint and went to Harbor Freight, got a couple of these like quick grip clamps, ratcheting clamps, whatever, and I got spray adhesive. This was like $13. The clamps were only like $4 a piece, but this is more expensive than I thought it would be. That's alright though, still cheaper than buying a press, you know, all together. So I'll get this adhesive and attach my foam and be back. So here is the press without being clamped closed. As you can see, there's kind of pressure on this end. It doesn't really take a whole lot to close it all the way. Now, there's my handle. I got some spray adhesive on my fingers, which is kind of nice. Not really. But there's the press on the other side, and I'll hold this with the other hand. You can open that up as expected. And now I'm going to try to maybe cut a design out for my knife. From what I've seen, you kind of are supposed to leave it kind of blocky, for the lack of a better word and then trim it after you're done pressing it and stuff. So we'll see how that goes. All right, so that is a huge disappointment. So I got our extra toaster oven, and I have my Kydex in there, and I have this just sitting here waiting. So I might try to return this. Like, I've had this on for multiple minutes, and I'm literally able to hold it. It's supposed to get 750 on the low setting and 1,000 on the high setting. It's on high. I've had it on for, like, multiple minutes, like I said. Like, probably about 12, 15 minutes, maybe. Yeah, that's very disappointing. And I had it, like, holding it against the Kydex for a few minutes straight, too, like that. Literally nothing. I mean, it's warm. It is warm. But it's, like, a freaking colder than a hairdryer, so... I looked on my thing, and it was, like, over $30 with taxes and stuff. So, yeah, that sucks. I'm going to try to return that if I can. Bought it off of Amazon. And we'll see about this.
kind of far up, but I need to make sure I can trim it and uh, get it to lock in pretty good. Now it seems like it's relatively easy to open, so I should be able to get this out no problem. And it looks like it all, you know, uh, formed pretty well. The press worked pretty good, and you can see that. I kind of wish that this would have, the knife would have uh, been up further towards the crease here, but that's something that takes practice, I guess. But the press worked good for the sake of this video. That's all that this video is really about. It's not really about making the sheaths themselves, just the press. First try at Kydex anything. I don't think I've ever even held a Kydex sheath. So I don't think it turned out bad at all. You can see the spots that are still warm where I kind of molded it by hand a little bit. Try to get it loosened up a little. Now it still needs cleaned up a little bit. Uh, but it's basically done. I wanted to show you guys. And it ended up looking pretty good. So, second try taking this clip. This is the sheath with the knife in it. It comes out pretty decently easily. It goes back in, but it won't come out by shaking. Again, pretty easily comes out and goes back in. And then, slips onto the belt, slips off the belt, So that's not too bad. Now, I know I just showed you this, but I wanted to take a clip just to say thanks for watching. I think this turned out pretty good, and I'm sure I'll update you guys with more projects having to do with this eventually. I think this should last a good long time. I'm pretty happy with it, and uh, yeah, hopefully it helps somebody out. This, I just say, with the materials for the press itself, I've got, I think, $23 in the foam, and I used, like, a little bit of paint that was still in the bottom of a can, which, you know, maybe, you know, 75 cents worth of paint, and then the scrap steel... Is like, oh, I want to say like maybe 30 cents a pound. And then the store-bought hinges that I took the coating off, you know, like a few bucks. And then a little bit of welding wire, which, you know, was negligible. So I only used a little bit. Yeah, I, I'd say I probably have like... Forty dollars into this thing and then the two sheets of kydex that I got which each sheet seems to be enough for an average size knife sheath it's like six bucks a knife and I found online you can find enough the same size sheets 8 by 12 for like less than two dollars each for like bulk buying and I'm sure you can find it even cheaper than that so I think this is a good way to go and then I used a couple of these eyelet things, which is also negligible because I think, I want to say like maybe 75 of them or something was like 16 bucks maybe with the tools, which the tools will last a good long while. I think this is a pretty affordable way to make sheaths for my knives. And I'll still do leather sometimes and stuff, but I haven't made too many sheaths anyways. So I might be 
more interested in making more of them with this stuff just to experiment a bit. And then let me know if you're interested in this knife because it is available. And again, thanks for watching. Bye.